Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. It is Thursday, and that means we bring back legendary investor Jonathan Twomley. How you doing, sir? Well, uh, I'm doing great, especially with that buildup. Um, <laughs> I hope I can live up to that uh, that moniker. Oh, you do. You do every uh, week. The channel loves you. Appreciate your insights. <laughs> well, hey, one of the things I wanted to talk about, actually saved this from episode one, Ivy Zellman. One of the things that Ivy was talking about is she's indicating that uh, even a small move in interest rates from, say, 3 to 4%. Again, folks, we are talking 30-year fixed owner OCK loans. She thinks a move from three to four percent could be enough to strangle housing and um, really make it roll over. And I thought, you know what? Let's talk to Jonathan about multifamily. Is there an interest rate that could hurt, uh, you know, the, the multifamily space? So, is, is this whole thing a house of cards that breaks if we get above four percent, or what do you think? Well, I don't know if it if it's a house of cards that breaks, but I mean, a rise of interest rates by a point would definitely cool the market. And I know there are a lot of people out there who insist, you know, with every fiber of their being that interest rates have nothing to do with cap rates and <laughs> people, people will continue to pay low cap rates for, for multifamily, even if interest rates rise because, well, because rent growth, right? And so, and they'll, so they're basically going to, you know, like make no money up front for the possibility of making money up in the on future because the they, yeah. they believe that rent growth is there. So, uh, and I am highly skeptical of this view because math, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh my God, math? Are you want to read math into this? Not yeah, feelings? I mean, Come on. If you, if, so you have to understand um, how the sort of valuation calculus works for sure. multifamily, right? We, I, we actually, and we should, maybe if you have an opportunity to link that thing we did like a year ago about mm. how small changes yeah, can really it. affect the valuation of a property. We, that, that, that's a really good explanation. Yeah. That spreadsheet the, we did off the, off the cuff. Yeah. I think, I think a building went down 40% with just small changes. Yeah. With just, a, just a few changes. And that's what happened in the great financial crisis. But so, but what, so basically what you have to understand is that, so you have a, yeah, ha, how you value a property is you have, uh, you know, you have your rents, right? You have your expenses. What's left over after you pay your expenses is called your net operating income, right? And the way that you value the property is you divide the net in operating income by the cap rate. And the, the cap rate is the same thing as the unlevered yield on the property, mm -hmm. right? So whatever the prevailing cap rate is, it's like if you paid 100% cash for this property, you had no debt on it, what would be the return that you would get, right? Before CapEx, it's just on an operating basis, mm -hmm. right? And whatever the prevailing cap rate is, well, then you can multiply that by the NOI of any building and you get the imputed value, right? Yep. So it, what, what happens though, is that if you're, if the cap rate, now, as long as the cap rate is higher than the interest rate, then you get positive leverage, meaning that, if you, if you have debt on the property, if you have a mortgage, right, you will make more money by on a adding on a, debt. Yeah, you'll make you'll make a higher percentage return. Let's just let's be yeah. clear, Dugas. The dollars coming out are going to be smaller because you're paying debt service, Correct. right? But the return on equity is going to be higher with leverage if interest rates are lower than um, than the cap rate, right? Mm -hmm. However, if interest rates are higher than the cap rate, you have negative leverage, which means that you, if you have a mortgage on the property, you'll make a lower return than you would have with no mortgage on the property, right? Have you, I, I have no idea. I don't know if this is there. Have we ever been in an environment where interest rates are above cap rates? Do you know of one? Well, I think, you know, I imagine in the 1970s we were. Okay, right? all right. And now it did not cause the multifamily market to, to seize up completely, but no. I really would be interested to see what happened to prices because um, I'm sure that with in that super high inflation environment, there were people who were willing to pay for multifamily as an inflation hedge, but also on the idea that, well, if inflation is this high, right, then, you know, it, in a year, if inflation is 20%, that means a year from now, my debt service in real terms is going to be 20% lower. 
Right? Ah, okay. Right. Yeah. However, in a in a mild inflation environment, and I know people are going to be really upset to hear me say this. Five percent is a mild inflation environment. <laughs> this is not. This is not hyperinflation. It's not great. <laughs> Yeah, right? but, but it's not hyperinflation. We only think of this as high because the, we've struggled for a whole decade to get inflation to be above 2%. True. Right? We got used to like almost no inflation. Mm -hmm. And now that it's five, which it routinely was basically after World War II until like 1990, it was basically three to 5% all the time. Yeah, kind of. Right? That's what it was, right? So, um, and then it went down to almost nothing for 10 years and everybody's now screaming because it went, now it's back where it always was before, mm -hmm. right? So, however- um, in this kind of environment, right, where you're, yeah, in real terms, your debt service is getting to be cheaper. Mm -hmm. It's not getting cheaper that fast, right? Mm -hmm. It's not getting, it's not going down by 20% in real terms in one year, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's going down by 5% in one year, which, you know, like that's, that's something, but it's not really going to like, you know, make a big difference to you in terms of like your, you know, right. your, your cash. So, um, anyway, if, if, so if interest rates are above cap rates, you've got negative leverage, which means that you're going to make less money or le you're going to make a lower return by putting debt on the property than you would without the debt. Right. Mm -hmm. However, nobody buys multifamily for cash because very few people have that kind of money sitting around. Right. If you're mm -hmm. looking at a 10 or $15 million, you know, acquisition, there are not that many people in the world who have that cash sitting in the bank yeah. that they can just go and spend Liquid, it, yeah. just go and put buy property with it. Yeah. There are some, but there are very few, right? The overwhelming majority of people are going to have to lever the property. They're going to have to put a mortgage on the property to get it to work. Mm -hmm. And now here's where we get back to math, right? You're going to, when you're, if the interest rates go up, your debt service is going to go up, right? The bank is going to look at this and say, okay, Mr. Investor, you must, your NOI, remember, remember NOI, we got back to NOI, your NOI must be at least 1.25 times your debt service. So your mm. debt service being your debt and equity payment. And even if, and I know there's been a lot of like interest only loans and whatnot, but it doesn't matter because they still calculate it on an amortizing basis, mm -hmm. right? So even if they're, even if they give you the, the goody of interest only for a few years, there's still, you still have to meet that as if it were fully amortizing Full okay. calcul calculation. The bank is just going to say to you, sorry, you cannot, this does not meet one, two, because your interest, your, your debt payment is so high, mm -hmm. right? Because interest rates have gone up, right? So what, what's going to happen? Either you're going to go to the seller and say, Hey, I'm, I'm paying you less, or you're going right. to go to your investors and say, give me more money. Yeah. And that's going to drive down your return because now yep. you're, you have less leverage. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it may not immediately cause cap rates to decline because we talked, because there still may be a little bit of a frenzy happening. People desperate to get their hands on multifamily people who think that 5% you know, inflation is the end of the world. Like there are some factors going into this sellers, not lowering their prices. Right. So, mm -hmm. but if the interest rates are sustained, at a at a, a point higher, let's say, this will cause prices to, if not decline, flatten until rents catch up, mm -hmm. right? So, until that NOI grows enough, right, mm -hmm. so that you can make that delta again, right. right? So it it so the idea that like rising interest rates will have no effect, well, if if rates go up a quarter, can you absorb that? Can you take a little lower return? Probably. But it is at the margins going to make it harder for you to get the debt in the first place. Yes. Right. Now, the, the or you know, but over the long term, it's going to cause you know things to to lessen. Now, now there's one wrinkle to this, which is that uh, bridge lender. So, you know, going to like the banks and the agencies, and they all have this very strict 1.25x coverage requirement, right? Mm -hmm. Because they learned their lesson from the Great Financial Crisis, right? Okay. However, into the gap now has stepped bridge lenders who are willing to go to 1.0. They're willing to say, hey, wow. if, you, if, if you are making enough money to pay your debt service and not a penny more, we'll, we'll lend you the money, right? And you know, that's okay in certain situations where like, for instance, you're doing a big value add, right? And you know that the rents, you know you're yeah. gonna raise the rents, 
after your value add, right? But, and that's, that's the function that Bridge always yeah. served in the past. Now, a lot of people are just buying or getting Bridge because it's all they can get. And they're, they're hoping that they can grow their rants enough that they can yeah. get in, into making some money. And, 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 you know, but this can't, this cannot sustain itself, right? It's, it's working now because rent growth is so high, right? That's also something that's not, a lot of what's happening with rent growth is catching up from the, the, the rent growth that was missed out on Correct. the last year and a half and actually negative rent growth. They had rent declines in a lot of places. So a lot of this is just catch up, yeah. catching back up and they're mm-hmm. exceeding trend a little bit because the economy is strong, right? People mm-hmm. are making more money, like we talked about in the last video. They can pay more for rent, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, however, that is not that is like the the mouse going through the snake, right? It's uh, not. It's this is not. It's not like we're not going to be having fifteen percent rent growth. No, over any sustained period of time, no, right? So. Probably not even beyond this year, right? This is just we may have strong rent growth next year, but not at at the level that right. we're having it now. Yeah. And if you look at say like a CoStar report where they actually project future rent growth. You see it like, oh yeah, 2021, we're projecting 10%, 2022, 4%, 2023, back down to two to 3%, yeah. you know? And so if, if interest rates go up and stay up, then it's going to definitely cause the multifamily market to slow down because, because you just can't, you just, the banks will not give you the money. And on the bridge side, like, at some point that's going to catch it'll catch up if you don't have the rent growth. So then you're yeah. taking a lot of risk. Like, Hey, I'm going to, you know, not, not make any money on this deal. Cause I'm going to put every penny into, uh, you know, into my debt service. And then, Oh, then what happened? What, what, what happens when we have CapEx or yeah. like, Hey, or I'd like to get paid. I'd like to make yeah. a return on this, small, you know, small so, things like that. Yeah. 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 I see so. a lot of things. And I think we've talked about this before. I see a lot of things in the debt structure of multifamily today that kind of reminds me of the crazy single family debt market, yeah. relying on interest only, uh, adjusting. You know, There was a time on residential where they had these teaser rates and they actually wrote the loan or approved the loan on the teaser rate. Mm. Right. So yeah, this bridge behavior kind of smells to me as some similar structural problems yeah i mean in the multifamily business too before the great financial crisis people were taking in order because cap rates were very compressed at the at the height of the bubble for also for commercial property but it was under the radar because most people weren't you know, yeah it was all residential that was the, yeah, that was the have, hot thing well and that was what individuals invested in right the yeah. syndications existed but it wasn't because we didn't have podcasting we didn't have bigger pockets we didn't have all this people didn't know about it right yeah, so agreed. so uh, but on the on the commercial side too there were cap rates are very low. And to try to make enough money, people were getting their bank debt and then they were putting mezzanine debt behind oh, it. On top of it or behind right? it, yeah. And then, and to try to get more, you know, so that their equity slice was was lower and people were getting down to like 7% equity, <gasps> right? Wow. On their deals, which like that could really juice your returns a lot. The problem is then what happened was the minute the economy went, went bad, right? Couldn't make your debt service. And now you're looking at, foreclosure or yeah. at least like a, a long very very long period of time of like i bought a couple of apartment buildings yeah. from people that were over leverage yeah yeah and, and the funny thing about apartments again we'll close on this right a lot of people remember single family crashing for me and again one market one experience single family went down single family actually returned and then multifamily came down i guess because you're in an apartment you could limp around longer maybe it's a bigger balance they don't want to foreclose but yeah right when wall street or I call them deep pockets came in and were buying houses. I switched to apartments. It, I, I had, I had, uh, you know, a full year of buying apartments for nearly nothing. It was, it was a good time. I mean, the value of apartments fell by something like 33 or 34% after the great financial crisis. And that was because yeah. of, you know, cap rates going up. Right. Yeah. And, I bought, I bought several apartments yeah. for 50% of what the previous owner paid. Yeah, not surprised. Yeah. So very cool. Well, Jonathan, how can people follow you, be part of your world? Well, there are two basic ways. One is come join my free Facebook group, Multifamily Investment Community. Uh, when you pop in there, just there's some questions you got to ask, ask uh, some questions you got to answer. So answer the questions, I'll let you in. Basically making you promise you're not going to spam the group. Yeah. Um, and then the other way is if you're interested in learning about my investments, uh, go to my website, Two Bridges Asset Management. 
uh, the URL is actually two bridges management and MGMT for management. I got to get a better URL, but that's what it is. Uh, but you cool. can always Google two bridges, two bridges asset management and uh, you can find me that way. Very, very, very cool. So Jonathan, thank you for this week. Great conversations. Take care. Yep. See you next week. Yep.